the 2024 anniversary event is back. We're getting tons of new rewards, including one that can give fast units, and even upgrades for both the Golden Orrery and Stage of Ages. Here's what you need to know. First, it's the same minigame as the previous anniversary event, where you have to spawn and merge gems to collect keys. Second, there will be two mini-challenges that run during this event, and they'll give you some good rewards and the three new boosters, if you're able to complete them. Third, most players will be able to achieve the main building fully leveled. However, to get the golden upgrade for the golden orrery, you may need to put in a bit more work. And fourth, if you're a diamond farmer, you should be able to pick up a good number of free wishing wells in this event, including shrink kits. Let's go back to the main building, the Urban Metro Plaza. This 4x4 roadless building gives population, happiness, and medals, as well as attack boosts for generic, guild expedition, and guild battlegrounds attacking and defending armies. On top of coins, forge points, goods, guild goods, and three fragments of a selection kit for two new buildings, the Flower Arboretum and Ethereal Airship. The Arboretum requires population, but gives us forge points, goods, guild goods, and boosts for defending armies for various features. It does need a road. The airship also requires some population and gives Forge Points goods and three fast units, as well as boosts for attacking armies for various features. It will not need a road. In Bronze League and higher, you can win a building providing fragments of the main building, Zephyr's Fusion Drinks. It will give boosts for attacking and defending armies, Forge Points goods, Guild goods, as well as those fragments. It will not need a road. The golden upgrade for the Golden Orrery massively improves the older building, giving us population, happiness, and supplies, defense boosts, forge points, previous age goods, three fragments of a selection kit for the Stage of Ages and its upgrade, and a random production of 30-minute mass supply rush and 1-up kit fragments. The Stage of Ages upgrade is also quite powerful, providing population and happiness, attack boosts, forge points, previous age goods, and 12 ranged units, a massive improvement to its previous stats. But you didn't come here for building stats. Let's talk about the minigame. It's the same as last year where we've got gems of three types. Red fire gems, blue water gems, and green wind gems. When you start the minigame, all of them are locked behind glass. You can then spend some energy here, the minigame's currency, to spawn gems of a random color that are not behind glass. We can then merge these gems with the locked ones to free the locked gems. However, you may have noticed that there are different looks to each gem. Well, that's because there are four levels of each color. Additionally, each locked gem has either the top or bottom of a key. You can only merge gems of the same level together, and when you do so, that merged gem increases in level. So two level one gems merging gives you a level two gem. When merging gems with key pieces, the keys also merge. So a top key plus a bottom key gives you the full key. Once we have gems with keys, you can then convert them using the board's tile into actual keys that you can then spend. Converting level 4 gems gives you 3 keys, while all other levels of keys only give 1. Whenever you merge with a locked gem, you get progress towards the grand prizes. Additionally, we can use those keys that we've converted to open boxes that will give us more progress. Overall, you get about half your progress from merging and half from keys. Eventually, you'll reach a point where you either can't clear the board further, or don't want to. You can refresh the board for a small fee of energy, starting for free, then 20, and then it doubles from there. The minigame might seem a bit overwhelming, but it doesn't need to be. Here's how you solve it. First, choose how many gems you'd want to spawn. I'd recommend spawning about 9 gems per board on average. It's a decent balance between progress and spending energy. Once you've spawned all your gems, choose one color to focus on. Then, starting with the level 1 gems, we're going to merge them together. There's a couple of rules that we want to follow with this. Whenever possible, merge your free gems only with locked gems. This gives the most progress, so try to avoid merging two free gems if it can be avoided. Try to merge gems so that you can create keys. For example, if you see there's a level 2 gem with a top of the key, merge with a level 1 gem that has a key bottom, and then merge with that level 2 gem to have a level 3 gem with a full key. Make merges with all the level 1 gems, and only then move on to the level 2 ones. This will keep you a bit more organized. Whenever possible, do not merge two gems with full keys together. Instead, merge each with a locked or free gem to level them further. When you reach level 4 gems, clear out any remaining locked to level 4 gems. Then convert all gems with keys, and move on to the next color. Continue this process until you can no longer merge gems on the board. 
then you're free to reset the board and start anew. This event is slightly different from the previous anniversary event in that we have some boosters to use. The gem mine spawns in one gem for free. It's basically the spawn button. Think of it as a free 10 energy to spend on specifically spawning. The gem pickaxe is interesting. You can only use it on free gems, but it turns one gem into two gems of the level lower. If those gems have keys, they'll carry over. It's great for fully clearing boards since it allows you to create more gems of a specific level. You can also use it to generate more keys. The trickiest to explain is the prismatic essence. It'll convert the color of your choice into colorless gems, which can then be merged with any others. Note that this won't free locked gems and that you cannot convert colorless keys. It can also be pretty useful for clearing boards or to get a lot of keys of a specific color. Just make sure that you only use it after spawning all the gems you want. Otherwise, you may spawn gems of the color you just converted to colorless. You start with one of each of these boosters, but can get many more from the mini challenges in this event. However, the rewards and quests have been changed since the event was on beta, so we're not sure of the exact rewards yet. The main strategy for this event is to just play a consistent number of boards per day and spread out your spending of energy. I'd recommend playing 4 boards per day, spotting 9 gems each. It's a good balance of progress and energy spend. However, the mini challenges may cost some extra energy to complete, so if you're planning to complete them, you may want to only play 2 or 3 boards with 9 gems each per day until we see how hard the mini challenges are. 3 boards per day will get you far past the 3000 progress mark, which is where the fully upgraded Metro Plaza can be obtained. However, the golden upgrade for the golden orrery is found all the way at 5,000 progress. You'll need to play 4 boards per day to manage that amount of progress, or complete the mini challenges, assuming it's still the reward at the end. When the mini challenges come around, be sure to prepare even if you don't plan on completing them fully. Complete as many event quests as possible in advance so that you have the energy to spend, and leave a board uncompleted the day before the mini challenge starts to save on the reset costs. Of course, I'll let you know when a mini challenge is starting over on my Discord server, link to join in the description. But when the mini challenge starts, you'll want to collect each quest as you complete it so that you can immediately start working on the next one. When possible, don't convert gems into keys until you need to for a quest or you need to reset the board. Use your gem mines to spawn more gems for free, and your pickaxes to break down larger gems into the smaller ones that you need in order to complete the quests. A lot of it will come down to luck with what's on your board, but just do as much as you can with each board you're given. You have two days to complete each mini challenge, so remember that you don't need to keep spending super far on your board reset costs. I've made a spreadsheet with my recommendations for the specific mini challenge quests as they were on beta, linked in the description and pinned in the event thread on Discord, which I will update with the new quests and rewards once the mini challenge starts. If you complete the first mini challenge, you should be able to get a good estimate for how much the second mini challenge will cost, and you'll be able to plan for it. Make sure that you spread out your energy from the mini challenges over the course of the rest of the event. You may very well end up completing more than two boards per day. If you want to go for pure progress in the event, the mini challenges are really just optional. Still, collect the quests as soon as you complete them, but I probably wouldn't change how you're playing in order to complete the entire thing. Instead, you'll want to just play a consistent number of boards each day. I'd recommend 4 boards, each with you spending 9 gems each. So in terms of reset costs, that's the free board and the 20, 40, and 80 energy boards that you will be playing. In most cases, you won't want to fully clear the board unless you can do so cheaply. Now, there's one more strategy here, but it's only if you want to get a lot of wishing wells and shrink kits for a diamond farm. Simply fully clear as many boards as possible. Wishing wells and their shrink kits each have a 20% chance of being won when you complete a board. So, good luck! Regardless of how you play, you'll want to follow some guidelines. First, always complete the daily challenge. You can win some extra keys or energy, which is worth about 250 extra progress if you complete it every day. Additionally, I highly recommend that you open the most expensive reward box each day. The first one you open gives double progress and double rewards, which can net you over 500 extra progress. This will eat some keys you could otherwise be putting towards daily specials, though. If you don't care much for your final progress, you could save these keys for the day with the daily special you want. 
Even if the daily special isn't the one you want though, make sure you're playing your boards each day. Spreading out your energy spending is very important. Just save those keys for the daily specials that you want to get. The daily specials list will be pretty strong during this event. The Tower of Conjunction selection kit will be available, the one that includes the golden upgrade. You can also get the Keymaster's Workshop to produce more Towers of Conjunction over time, Golden Orrery kits or Stages of Ages to use their new upgrades on, or just the Epic Anniversary kit, which includes the Tower of Conjunction kits, Sans the Golden Upgrade, the Level 1 Keymaster, Golden Orrery kits, and Stage of Ages. But that's not all, no! You can also get the Druid Hut and Archdruid Trees kits, in case you didn't get enough during the previous event, Mountain Reserve, Panda Reserve, Panda Pathway, and Red Panda kits if you want a touch of the wildlife event, the Hideouts Reach, Governor's Villa, and Privateer's Boathouse kits for those chill summer vibes. You can also pick up the Heroes Tavern, Athlon Abbey, Windmill Farm, Harvest Farm, Sunflower Oil Press, Tarot Card Caravan, and Chocolate Tree Selection Kits. When you do see one of those many daily specials you want, pick the most expensive boxes if you want the most progress for your keys, but the cheapest boxes if you want the most daily specials for your keys. However you open your boxes, make sure you're balancing the spending of your keys so that you don't end up running out of one color before the others. If you want to be notified of what the next day's daily special will be in advance, join my Discord server and opt in to the daily special's notifications. Link is, of course, in the description. Now, if you're planning to spend on this event, there's some things you should know. First is to spread out your spending over the course of the event. Seriously, boards get really expensive if you try to spend all your energy in one day. The more days you spread it across, the more progress, keys, and rewards you'll get. Also, if you're going to be spending a lot, at some point it will become cheaper to just fully clear boards rather than resetting them, most likely around the 6th or 7th board mark each day. Second, expect the leagues to jump towards the end of the event. A lot of players will have unspent keys that they'll need to use. If you want an estimate for the end league progress on your world, you can try the beta test of my league predictions on my Discord server. Just submit data often for your world's leagues, and it'll try to predict the end league thresholds for your world. Third, and finally, the gold league and beta for this event was about 20% higher than the gold league for the soccer event, which had a similar minigame. That means the average gold league will probably end up around 6,500 progress, but can vary wildly depending on your world. Linked in the description is the gold league data from the 2023 soccer event with the 20% increase included if you want an estimation for how expensive your world's gold league might be. I highly recommend that you submit data for your world, however, as that will be more accurate. Regardless of whether you choose to spend or not, it should still be a pretty lucrative event. I hope this video helped out a bit, and do remember to join my Discord server to help collect data and be notified of new daily specials. Good luck in the event, and as always, I'll see you all next time.